माय नेम इज रामाकृष्णा आई एम ए फिजियोथेरपी स्टूडेंट माय क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज द नीड ऑफ अल्लाह टू क्रिएट एडम एंड यू एंड दिस टोटल यूनिवर्स व्हाट ही विल गेट फ्रॉम दिस एंड माय सेकंड क्वेश्चन इज एवरीथिंग इज क्रिएटेड बाय समवन सो इवन गॉड मस्ट हैव बीन क्रिएटेड बाय समवन व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अल्लाह ब्रदर आस्क थ्री क्वेश्चंस द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाई डिड गॉड क्रिएट एडम एंड ईव एंड व्हाट वाज हिज रीजन टू क्रिएट ऑल दिस वर्ल्ड एंड ह्यूमन काइंड Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and Eve may peace be upon them both so that the human kind could come they were the great great grandparents Allah says in surah hujurat chapter number 49 verse number 13 ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakrin wa unsa wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila litarafu inna qalaqnakum min dhalai yatqakum inna la alimun khabir oh human kind we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and the most honored in the sight of almighty god is the person who has taqwa the criteria to judge any human being it is not wealth it's not color it's not caste it's not creed it is taqwa it is god consciousness it is righteousness it is piety so adam and eve peace be upon them both they were our great great grandparents of yours also and of mine also all human kind Therefore I call you a brother we are brothers in humanity Allah says ya you are nas o oh, human kind and Allah says in surah isra chapter number 17 verse number 70 wa laqad karramna bani adama almighty god has honored all the children of adam whether they are born in india usa uk born in a hindu family or a muslim family or a christian family Allah says he has honored all the bani adam if you are a human being Allah has honored you whether your name is Zakir, Abdullah, Ramu, Shankar. If you are born as a human being, Allah has honored you. Now come into the question: Why has Almighty God created the human beings? Allah has created the human beings because Allah says this is one of His best creation. All the other creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, they obey. We have the angels. Whatever Almighty God says, the angels obey Him directly. They have no free will. The human being is the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, which has a free will. We can either obey Him or disobey Him. Allah has created such a creation we are one of his best creation in the best of forms but we have a choice of either obeying god or disobeying god if you obey god we will go to jannah we will go to swarg we will go to heaven if you disobey we will go to hell we will go to nark so this is a test for the hereafter allah says in surah mulk chapter number 67 verse number 2 allazi khalaqal mauta wal hayata it is allah who has created that a life to test which of you is good in deeds so this life is a test for the hereafter so allah has created the human beings and allah says in surah dariyat chapter number 51 verse number 56 wama khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun that we have created the jinn and the men not but to worship him so we supposed to worship obey the commandment of allah subhanahu wa taala this is a different creation of allah subhanahu wa taala which has the free will of even going against allah subhanahu wa taala or obeying him. all the other things the stars the trees the mountains the quran says they do sajda to allah subhanahu wa taala they prostrate to him they obey him we have a free will now when allah has given a free will with the free will if we obey him we become had the angels with the free will if we disobey him we become the partners of the devil he is created us for the test for the hereafter come to your second question everything has a creator who created god if anyone says everything has a creator it is a wrong statement every created thing has a creator the definition of god is he is uncreated the moment you say who created god he is not god the definition of god is he is uncreated suppose a person comes and ask you that brother my friend john he was admitted in the hospital he gave birth to a child can you guess was it a girl or a boy can you guess try it out guess can't guess why can you on the microphone can you guess was it a girl or a boy ha huh? see brother john he was admitted in the hospital he gave birth to a child was it a girl or a boy can you guess a 50 50% chance girl or boy people are laughing why can you guess can't guess why even if you guess can you get the answer right acha can you guess i'll give you two chances was it a girl or a boy try it out 
girl. Brother, can a man give birth to a child? Ah, there you made a mistake. Same way you made a mistake by asking who created God. A man cannot give birth to a child. So where is the question of it being girl or a boy? See, now you understood. Ah, now that's good, brother. So it was a man cannot give birth to a child. So where is the question of a girl or a boy? So when you are asking who created God, God by definition, Allah by definition is uncreated. The moment you say who created Allah, he's not Allah. Walam yakul lahu kufanat. There's nothing like him. Coming to your last part of the question, who is Allah? Who is Allah? The best definition I can give you is quote to you Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number one to four. It's mentioned in the Quran. Kul ho Allah ahad. Say He is Allah one and only. Allah is Samad. Allah the Absolute Eternal. Lam dilat walam yulad. He begets not nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufan ad. There is nothing like Him. This is a four line definition of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Any human being, any person says so and so candidate is God. If that candidate fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. Four line definition. This is the litmus test. For theology, for the study of God, first is Kul Hu Allah Ahad. Say is Allah and only. Allah is Samad. Allah the Absolute Eternal. Lam Mirid Walam Yulad. He begets not nor is he begotten. Walam Yakul Lahu Kufanat. There's nothing like him. If you go to the Hindu scriptures, the same is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. Kul Hu Allah Ahad is mentioned. If you read Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, Ikkam Evidityam. God is only one without a second. Second test. Allah is Samad. Allah the Absolute Eternal. Bhagavad Gita chapter number ten verse number three says, "I am known as the Lord of all the worlds, the unbegotten, the beginningless." Third test: Lam bilad walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. It's mentioned in the Shrutha Shrutha Upanishad, chapter number six verse number nine. Na chas se kasij janita na chadipa. Of him there are no lords. He has got no parents. Almighty God has got no father. He has got no mother. And walam yakul lahu kufanad. There's nothing like him. Is mentioned in Shrutha Shrutha Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number nineteen, and Yajurved, chapter number thirty-two, verse number three, where it says, "Na tasya pratima asti." Of that God, there is no pratima, there is no idol, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no sculpture. Who says that? Yajurved, chapter number thirty-two, verse number three. Same as Walam Yakul Lok of Fanahad. So any. Person saying so and so candidate is God. If that candidate fits in the four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. For example, some people say Bhagwan Rajneesh is Almighty God. Once during question answer time, a Hindu told me we don't believe Bhagwan Rajneesh to be God. I never said that the Hindus believe Bhagwan Rajneesh is God. I said some people believe Bhagwan Rajneesh to be God. Let us put this Rajneesh to test. First test is Kul Hu Allah Ahad. Say is Allah one and only. Was Rajneesh one and only? Was he the only man who claimed divinity? There are hundreds of them, and in this country, we have thousands of men who have claimed divinity. He is not the only one. But Rajneesh Bhakti said, no, no, he is unique. Let's go to the next test. Allah is Samad. Allah the Absolute Eternal. Was Rajneesh Absolute Eternal? We know from his biography, from his autobiography, he was suffering from asthma, from diabetes, from chronic backache. Imagine Almighty God suffering from asthma, diabetes, chronic backache. Third test: Lam Mirid Walam Yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. Bhagwan Rajneesh was born in Madhya Pradesh. He had a father and mother. In 1981, he goes to America, USA, and he takes thousands of Americans for a ride. In the state of Oregon, he starts his center and calls it as Rajneesh Puram, his village. Later on, the American government arrests him and put him behind bars. Rajneesh says. The American government slow poisoned me. Imagine Almighty God being slow poisoned. In 1985, the American government kicks him out of the country. He comes back to India in the same city, Pune, and he goes back to his center, which is now called as Osho Commune. And if you go to the Samadhi of Rajneesh, it is mentioned there on the Samadhi, Bhagwan Rajneesh, Osho, never born, never died. But visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. Never born, never died. But visited the earth from the 11th of December 1931 to the 19th of January 1990. They forgot to mention a samadhi. He was not given visas to 21 countries of the world. Almighty God coming in this world to visit the world and requires visas to go to different countries. 
and the archbishop of Greece said, if you don't remove Rajneesh out of this country, we'll burn his house and the house of his disciples. And the last test, is so stringent that no one besides the true almighty God can pass. The moment you can compare God to anything, he is not God. We know Rajneesh, like the human beings, had a beard, one nose, two eyes, two ears, two hands. The moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. If someone says, Almighty God is thousand times stronger than Anand Swashnigar. When I've heard the name of Anand Swashnigar, have you heard Anand Swashnigar? The person who got the title Mr. World, Mr. Universe, the strongest man in the world, the strongest man in the universe. The moment you can compare God to anyone, whether it be Anand Swashnigar, whether it be Dara Singh, whether it be King Kong, whether it be a thousand times or million times, the moment you can compare God to anything in this world, He is not God. There's nothing like Him. This is a four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given in the Quran. Whichever God you're worshipping, brother, put that God to the test of Surah class. If that God passes, that is a true God. Otherwise, it's a fake God.